Good evening, everybody. I'm going to call to order the Town of Swan Select Board meeting. It is Tuesday, August 4th, 7 p.m. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, agenda review, David. Uh, just that I added dates under the PRB and Planning Commission Season Meeting. I didn't have them until this morning. How about under executive session where it's legal? Yeah. Is that to discuss uh, the information that Brian gave us? Right, and uh, some other things. So there's uh, legal contracts and personnel under executive okay. session. James? I was asked by uh, Chief Stell to move law enforcement to the end of the meeting so we get 10. And I don't know what happened, number 9, I guess. Right now, we'll put it after 9 if he, um, he's in here. With, actually, let's put it before 9. Okay. And we'll just adjust that if we need to. I mean, I actually want to add one thing to that, too, under law enforcement. Uh, push it over. Speed points. Okay. Topics uh, 1A, July 21st, 2020, Select Board in person teleconference uh, regular meeting. I'll make a motion for those minutes. I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Here are none. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Public comment, um, Alan Lawler, he left, but he did leave me a um, message or a, a letter. And this is a topic that we're going to get heavily involved in, I think, over the next few meetings. Um, we asked at the last meeting, and David, I know when we spoke yesterday, you still haven't had any luck with the state yet. Um, no. Anybody from a and R, water quality, who can no. talk to us about what's going on? No, no the problem with the state is they they all work from home now, and you have to leave messages and then wait for them to get back to you. So I've been researching on different parts of the thing. I also did the uh, Corps of Engineers site, because they're the ones who have the final jurisdiction over any U.S. water, and um, I haven't gotten anything back from them yet. Okay. Mr. Lawler's uh, letter is basically talking about um, his property. He is located at 4 Macomb Shore Road. And if you haven't seen it down there, the conditions uh, up at the northern end of uh, Macomb Shore Road, where the town beach or the village beach is, the, the properties north of it, and several of the properties south of it, it is a very nasty situation to say the least. And there's a lot of concern about property values, um, and I understand that, and there's a process for that. Um, and so his letter is basically talking about property values, and he wants to know what he needs to do prior to April 1st, 2020, um, going through the process of trying to get his land uh, assessed differently. So I'm going to give this to David. 
So you can keep a copy of it and we can start collecting all the letters and I have another one I'll talk about in correspondence that was sent to me during the last two weeks and we will put it on the agenda as soon as we get somebody from the state who can help us uh, talk a little bit about the water quality. Roger, you're next. Thank you. No, I wanted to thank this group for uh, hearing my concerns about that deplorable water quality last week. Uh, subsequent to that meeting, I did meet with the town administrator and uh, requested being put on tonight's agenda. And he just recently had told me that I would be put on the agenda. That disappoints me that I'm not officially on the agenda, but I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak anyways. And follow up to uh, uh, being here the last time, taking a, a few actions. I'd love to know who the town administrator has contacted uh, from the state's uh, Lakes and Ponds Division because I have uh, had uh, one conversation and a couple uh, email contacts, but of course uh, no uh, 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 Immediate, or no, no indications of any immediate uh, assistance. I know there can't be immediate assistance, but uh, you know, just referring me to water studies that they've done and so forth, and uh, and the declination to come out and see the uh, uh, the property in person. By the way, the town administrator has come out, and also Mr. Clark. I appreciate. That uh, it offered to all of you that you could, were welcome to come and look for my property, and perhaps some of you did go to the Village Beach to uh, see what uh, the process was. I have been in contact and spoken to an individual from the uh, uh, state tax department. Also, uh, uh, David had suggested that I call. Uh, he indicated that, that he wasn't wasn't calling, but I should call the uh, town manager in uh, uh, the town of St. Albans and, and had to leave a, a message, and then she called back and was very pleasant and, and lengthy in her conversation. She uh, explained in some detail some actions that that town has taken in terms of uh, uh, stormwater retention and, uh, and um, water management or runoff management uh, initiatives, that was helpful. She referred to some grants that they've accessed for that uh, uh, whole process. She also indicated that both the town and the city of St. Albans put money in their annual budgets to match the grants and assist with the work they're doing because a number of us in, 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 our, in my, uh, the area of my home we're aware that they that uh, St. Albans was doing some things with their beach. Uh, uh, I asked, and she explained what they do with the weed rake that that they bought. They pull that close to shore with a town tractor and take the the material that they collect uh, elsewhere. But they purchase the the rake and maintain it. I. I, I can't recall offhand if I asked her if, if it was possible for our town to borrow that, but I, I know sometimes with municipal sharing, sometimes, especially if a few dollars are involved, such things are, are possible. She also, uh, someone else had referred me to, uh, well, I'll, I, I don't know how you pronounce the acronym, so I'll say uh, St. Albans, uh, St. Albans Area Watershed Association, I believe, and and she explained how how they're funded and that, that they do a, a weed harvesting further out into the lake and and how she thinks that both their own town actions and and that uh, weed uh, harvesting from the water association has helped improve water flow, which helped keeps. Uh, the algae down and so forth, they've, they've had uh, good results uh, from that. So I wanted to, uh, to, to share all that and return to uh, express 
my concerns, as you mentioned it tonight, Mr. Clark, I do remember uh, the suggestion that, that, you know, that the town wait and hear from someone from the, the state. And again, I can understand that. I also know from my own personal experience the last couple of weeks that that seems to be uh, hard. In each case, though, I was given email addresses and phone numbers that they did, uh, they did respond to. So uh, uh, had a, a further conversation with the uh, uh, lister also. Uh, David explained the uh, assessment grievance pro process. Keep in mind, my main goal is to, to have the, the water quality be improved, as, as is uh, Mr. Uh, Lawler's. Uh, a few of my neighbors are talking that they, they plan to put their properties for sale this winter. Nobody could sell now, but just like, like we were the victims, if you sell in the winter and people don't know what's going on, then, then you stand a better chance of, of uh, selling. I've spent a number of hours though coming in a few years ago. I had come in and looked at a couple of the, uh, the I don't know what you call them, the cards on, on file in the McQuam Shore Road. Just recently I've gone through the, the, all of the, uh, the parcels and have assembled a, an Excel spreadsheet with some of the data, which I'll formally share with you when able. In the meantime, I could uh, forwarded electronically, I think uh, you'll find it interesting. Aside from the water quality issues, uh, I, I found it uh, very interesting. Ro Roger, the can, I, Roger, can I just jump in for one second? Yes. Anybody else here about McCalm Shore water quality? Okay. And would you like a chance to speak as well? I just, have two, I, I just have two sentences. Yeah, that's okay. So I was going to say, like, the comparison of that you know, we will put this on the agenda item. I'm not trying to prevent that. Uh -huh. We've got to get a little bit smarter before we sit here and get into any great conversation yeah. about what can and can't be done and what's the town's responsibilities, what's the yeah. state's, what would the state let us do. So that is why it didn't get on the agenda tonight. Okay. And I, as far as the property value and the assessment, if there's an issue with that, let's take that up when we get it on the agenda, Roger. Okay. Uh so I, I did write a few questions then in, in summary. Uh, where, where does the select board plan to go from here? Yeah, we're not, uh, we're not prepared to debate or answer questions that, tonight. We, oh, will get, okay. we will get this on the right, agenda. All right. yeah. I'm not trying to de debate. Nope. So you'll know, though, that's one of my questions. Yep. Uh, curious what assistance uh, you folks can offer and what more information you need from me. Okay, all fair. We will have this on the agenda for the next meeting. And David, I want to implore her that you get somebody from the state at least to have the conversation. It would really be good to get somebody up here on site prior to the meeting if we can. They need to see it now, not in January, not in late September. They need to see it now. Although the condition up there is something that might be seen more often in September than as early in July as it happened this year. No. Is that correct statement? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that lake has been low and, like that in September. Oh yeah. Or it, last year it was mid-August. Okay. So this year it's way early, making it even worse. But yep. We, we, will have, we will have that discussion. Okay. So Thank you very I much. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just want to say I'm really uh, I appreciate all the research you put into this. It seems like you're really passionate about this, and you seem like you come up with some solutions as well with the the weed rake as an opportunity to get some of the um, yucky stuff that's yeah. growing a lot of yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so no, I, I know that. All right, I'm going to be the chair. Sorry. This is public comment. Things about the weed rake and that sort of thing, we will talk about it okay. at a meeting where it's on an agenda. Maybe you should try to, either you should contact some of the local state reps we have here in town to see if they can help you get hold of somebody from the state better than okay. you're having one. But I don't well, want to be discussion with it, but that's just a, okay. a suggestion. By the way, David did ask that, and the, uh, the uh, listener too, that, that I contact the, the town's uh, health officer, which I did actually the day of your, your, your last meeting, and then of course realized that, that he was going to be leaving that position, but I've heard nothing back right. on that front. Yeah. So. That's another thing.
the health officer would be a good option. Thank you, John. All right, Roger, thank you. We will be spending more time over the course of the next few months on this. It's a big issue affecting a lot of people down there. Can I make just one more statement? Just for, for your information, one of the folks that I spoke to from the, I believe from the Lakes and Ponds Division, said that uh, uh, as far as, the, as them being able to do too much, that their hands are sort of tied because they don't have the legislative authority to do more. So, so she suggested contacting our, our state representatives and trying to get some legislative advances. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Ma'am? Um, can, can we just get your name? Uh, sure. We had a sign-in sheet, but you got here a few minutes after. Yes. Can... Sorry, I missed what Roger okay. said. Uh, Pam Haas. I live on the Quam Shore. And if I remember correctly, the problem starts even in August, which is prime swimming, boating. Um, and I've smelled a lot of smells in my life, <laughs> and this makes me want to vomit. So it might even be a health concern. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is they're stinking, but it makes me gag. Okay. So, I mean, I'm, I'm worried about what it is and what it's doing to our health, our recreational opportunities. Thank you for coming and speaking. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Sandy, maybe? All right. For the police chief here, does any board members have an issue with nope. staying in the order of the original agenda? Nope. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. Sorry I was late. I bounced in between two board meetings. I had to <coughs> work with the uh, school board earlier. Hopefully you made some progress. Do they know one of the issues you said you were discussing with them? Yep, we did.
some of our part-time staff that wants to do that as extra assignment. So we're going to be randomly targeting uh, areas uh, within the village and the town uh, where we know we have speeding complaints and those things. So if anybody gets any speeding complaints, uh, please shoot them to us so that we can uh, put those uh, in targeted uh, areas with that, that personnel. That's all grant funded, 100% paid for by Governor's Highway Safety, so that won't be coming off our, uh, our local budgets or out of, out of these, these types of activities. How did you get that? Huh? Uh, Governor's Highway Safety, is that something you applied for? Or? So we're part of a, a two-county group between uh, Franklin and Chicken County. So the problem was is during COVID, a lot of those funds were frozen because being state funds, they didn't want us stopping cars because they didn't want because COVID to be, uh, so they froze those funds. They've now uh, fully released those funds. So uh, they had released the DUI funds continuously because they wanted drunk drivers off the road. And even if they would have released the funds in, uh, in March and April, they had no car in the road. I mean, our traffic was probably one eighth of what we normally saw here in the village uh, because people were staying home. Uh, but now that uh, fatal crashes and everything's up, they, they funneled some of that leftover money uh, back into the, the system. So we're looking at, uh, we've got an additional 100 hours of dedicated patrol that we can do for, for traffic. For, for August and September. So it's only for those two months? Huh? It's only for those two months? We, we have, uh, October 1 is a new fiscal year for the federal government grant cycle. Okay. So we have, we'll have funds there. I'm just not sure how much those funds will be. Okay. You know, we, we, I haven't been told yet. So it could be 100 hours and it could be 20. If that 100 hours could continue, I don't know. Okay. Yes, the office a few times, so you usually get funded so did they get a chance to sit down at Brooklyn at all and John Aguirre? John Aguirre yeah. we, we were down there only once. Um, again, uh, we, unfortunately during the daytime we ended up with two people out um, who uh, were sick with uh, COVID style symptoms. They've both been tested negative. Uh, it's just the, the one was diagnosed with ultimately ended up with a cold and the other one with a, another respiratory infection. But um, they're coming back to work at the end of this week. So. Okay. Then the ship's <laughs> All right, James, do you have something else? I, oh, yeah, I'm sure we went without the ski kind of talking about it, but uh, some complaints up on the Bushy Road, which is notorious for speeding, anyways, 105. Woods Hill, all those areas up that way. Um, yeah, Woods Hill, we targeted some in this this group here. There was a couple of tickets written up there. Uh, yeah. That, 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 that. Um, but yeah, your directed patrols will be happening here real, real soon. With the, especially with the extra, because those yeah, are. Yeah, that was my question tonight. Yeah, I yeah, money coming in, so I'm it. Yeah, those are definitely, <clears throat> unfortunately, the amount of time we've spent on the Bush Road just doesn't seem to slow it, but the traffic yeah. there is, it, is dangerously fast. Yeah, I, I don't see that see police during the day and morning. They, they hammer it pretty hard, so but I don't see much need, and you know, yeah. as you guys are going through there, so. I think people with words out, but people, the cops are out there in the morning time, but it seems to be evening. There's not a lot around there, so. Any other Thank questions you. or comments? Or Chief, uh, <coughs> for the, the 100 hours, have you decided yet yeah, how you're going to break that up amongst the village and town? With that? How are you going to break up the hours as far as the grant hours between the village and town if you decide to get? It's going to be targeted based on where the real problems are. Um, and so the bulk of those real problems are actually in the town. Uh, with the village is confined to it. we have a few uh, areas. Uh, Spring Street, we have some issues on. Grand, we have some issues on. Uh, Canada, we have some issues on. But the bulk of it is some of the more wide open roads in the town. Because one of the things with that grant that we have to target with is where our injury crashes. So we have that grant comes with dedicated areas based on injury crashes. So. We have to spend a percent of it, percentage of it on Bushy Road 105 um, because those are areas with the, the greatest number of injury crashes. Yep. I don't have anything else. Yeah. Um, I know last time we talked about um, getting some training involved with racial equity, and I was just wondering if that's still moving forward. Training for what? Uh, racial equity and diversity. For the police department? Yeah. 
We, we have annual training on uh, racial and equity and diversity mandated by the state of Vermont. It's put on by the Vermont Police Academy annually. Okay, so you get that annually? Yep. That's all for me, thank you. All right, Dean, any other things? All right, thank you very much, Chief. Appreciate it. Uh, Oak Town Business, discuss application deadline for filling of select board member. We <coughs> had uh, Gary submit his resignation, I believe it was last week. We have the known health officer and animal control officer vacancies, which we talked about at the last meeting. We said we were going to revolve those until they're filled. We have applications. I think we have a sufficient number. We'll be talking about that in the executive session tonight. Um, but I, I'm quite sure we have uh, enough applications to go forward and uh, fill those vacancies. Uh, but as far as the select board, you want to talk about that, David, what we've done? And uh, well, the, the select board, uh, uh, I waited until today until you publicly announced it. I'll put an ad on for that on the website. There are ads on there already for the other two. ACO and HO, and people have been responding to them. Um, so uh, I guess for the, uh, at least for the select board members, since that's relatively new, uh, perhaps the next meeting would be a good deadline for applications for letters of interest, if that's okay with Could the board. Can we put on the electric sign again? Oh, yeah. Okay. There's a good one that? I'm good with that. So today is the 4th, August 18th will be the... Uh, uh, let's say 4 p.m. on the 18th would be the deadline for application for the select board vacancy. The health officer that you put on the town website, did you have a closing date? I know at the last meeting we talked about we were just going to keep those open until they were filled. Yeah, and and uh, that is a little different because we have not yet received uh, notice, official notice from the state that the position's open because... Oh, yes, it, yes we have. I got my certificate today. I have been appointed to the <laughs> health officer for three years. Wow. Along with a nice letter from Dr. Levine, the Commissioner of Health, who I know is very busy with his uh, updates that he does, uh, but he sent me a very nice letter telling me what I need to do. I got my certificate, although it just says to the uh, chair of the select board, it doesn't have my name on there. I'll transfer it you. Yeah, and I got a thing about health officer email, listserv etiquette, and I got a very good book, which actually is nice, that talks about different types of complaints and how to handle them. And one I heard tonight is the possible air quality down on the Quam shore. So just one minute and I'll be with you. But yes, yeah, so as far as the health officer, uh, the state is aware of it and uh, they realized the other one was 31 July and Nate with a uh, one August salary. Yeah, I think uh, I'll, I'll call them tomorrow to find out because I think what would have to happen is you would have to resign and create an opening and then they would. I think we just notice. appoint and then they well, no, we don't, the select board does not appoint. You recommend okay. to the Department of Health who you want. And then they, uh, if they approve, they send a notice like you got to that person. Yeah, it says when towns are unable to designate a town health officer, the chair of the select board has chosen to fill the position. To that end, who did this? Anyway, we'll, we'll get this information to you, but we will give them a recommendation very shortly. <laughs> as much as I want this, um, we will fill it with somebody else. Um, it is both. listed on the town website that uh, applications are due uh, August 18th by 4 p.m. for both the health officer and the animal control officer. I, I have it up right now. What's that? Um, it says on the website, um, letter of interest by 4 p.m. on Tuesday, August 18th for both positions, just so you're aware. Okay. Yeah, someone mentioned the Thank you for clearing that up. Okay. And I probably put that on there. I'm surprised it wasn't August 1st. 
far? Well, without uh, any uh, anyone interested prior to recently, then uh, we wouldn't have had anyone. I mean, it would have been kind of a short notice for August 1st. I think uh, the positions require uh, when a vacancy comes up in a two week notice. So that's, I just and extended it after that. his resignation yeah. until uh, the. So it's not even two weeks yet, and that's why you had to push that to the next meeting? Uh, well, it, it was extra time. I mean, in the past, we had not, you know, not a lot of interest in these things. Okay. Yeah, we've got a little uncertainty here. Um, there is an issue, I think, with us not pulling the animal control um, yeah. as soon as we can. So I think when we talk about at least the list that we have in executive session, we make some decision if we're going to continue to leave that vacant for another two weeks, because that, that's a service to the community that should be available. Um, so I throw that out there. I know what it says on there. Thank you for that clarification. And uh, we'll see where we go from there when we talk, when we talk about that. Anything, Mark? No, nope. no position. So for select board, again, August 18th by 4 p.m., and hopefully that night we can uh, make a decision and get the vacancy filled. Yeah. Swanton MBU sidewalk project, design firm selection update. Yeah, I'll cover that. Um, uh, the committee uh, that reviewed the, uh, I think it was six uh, firms that were interested in that, um, uh, decided on two of them to interview. Uh, those MBU. Inter I'm sorry, Daniel. What's that? MBU. Where is that? Right? Yeah, talking yeah. talking about MBU, not... B is, is the MBU. Not Lake Street. Oh, sorry. I didn't look at the agenda. Thank you. Um, so you, oh, you well, Elizabeth, well, and Mark attended the MBU. Right. Correct. And in the packet tonight is the uh, information from Bethany on uh, uh, the recommendation she made was to hire Limero and Dixon as a firm to do that project. And uh, there, she gave a, a description of the qualifications they have and so forth. They also um, turned out to be the, the lowest uh, proposed cost for doing the work. Uh, they were over 100000 down to, the, I think, the 46000 something you see there on the very last page of the packet. Um, and they're, they're a good firm, uh, not familiar with them from other towns. And so uh, if the board uh, approves going ahead with them tonight, and you could talk about this in the executive session if you want to later before you make a decision, uh, because it, it, it is contractual, um, then uh, a contract would be worked up per the state guidelines. And uh, at that point, the board would review the contract and decide whether or not to approve it. Mark, you were on the committee, any thoughts? Um, for me, I mean, I haven't been doing this as long as some, some people have on these studies. This is probably one of the most thorough and in-depth ones that I think that I've read. Uh, the thing that I, I liked, uh, without even looking at the dollars and cents, because I did that last, I read it first, sent it down, and came back to it, because usually if you read one first, it catches your eye. But going back to it, even recognizing they really must have come up here and done some more work. And you know, you'll see, I think, on one of the pages here, they list some of the concerns and, and the key project design issues that are there. Uh, so they were really looking for problems and how to address the problems other than just putting a packet together from stormwater to lights to the sidewalk to the wetlands. Uh, they were very thorough. The guardrails didn't change to the, the guy wire. Uh, I just thought these guys you know, were certainly above some of the others. There was a, a close second, but. Um, I, for me, these guys really stood out. And then when I said look at that dollar, I thought, wow, there's something wrong. And then really looking at it, there was nothing wrong with what they put together. So, for me. Yeah. Elizabeth? So, I, I was going to echo what um, Mark said. I will say, just to be clear, because 
The grant does not allow you to make your decision based on the, the estimate first. Um, so I, like Mark, looked at all of the proposals and then went back and looked at the costs, and they were so varied. I was like, I'm not understanding these. So the cost was not was not the, the first. They were the only ones because if you remember, per the grant agreement, the estimated um, engineering was 10% of the overall grant, which was 56,000 and change. They were the only ones who came under the 56,000. So again, that was on our first consideration. They were very thorough, made a couple of suggestions of things to do in conjunction with the project. So clearly they came up, spent some time, and, and did a very thorough job. So, and that's nothing against the other three. There were four total, nothing against the other three. It was just they did a really nice job. I'm very comfortable supporting the decision of what the uh, review committee came up with. Well, uh, unless people want to talk about an executive session, I'm very comfortable. All right, sure, a couple questions. Yeah. Um, so this is, these funds, this is going to be paid for by the grant we got to the sidewalk, right? Is there, do we got to pay part of this? We are 20%. What? We're 20%. 20%, okay. Out of the highway budget, we carved out money for the beginning of the construction, the plan was to put away so much each year because we figured it's going to be about a four-year process. Yep. And we put away money for both the design of McQuam and Lake Street, or the feasibility study, yep. and the actual design of this project. Mm -hmm. So yes, we, okay. we are we have budgeted our, our share of it. Okay. Um, so Heather? This isn't, isn't going to change the budget, or the, because you guys have been saving for it. What's that? You've been budgeting for this for a while. And it's when we when we made the decision to accept the grant, we had to start budgeting the money so that we could pay our share. So okay. we we switched some things around in the highway budget to cover both of these projects. Wonderful. Anything else, Heather? That's good. Mark, anything else? Uh, for me, uh, I'll, 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 I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion, but what's the name of the company? It's Lemero and Dixon. At this point, uh, you would need to let Bethany know that you approve uh, going forward with this firm, yeah. and then she'll come up with the contract uh, later. To so I need to make a motion to approve their the, the, the going forward this right Yeah. All right. Where'd you see the name was again? Lemero and Dixon. Dixon. All right. I'll make a motion that we go with Lemero and Dixon um, Engineering Services for the sidewalk, a new sidewalk project. Oh, second. Motion then made and seconded. Where I come from, that's Lamore and Dickinson. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Very good. Thank you, folks, for uh, sitting on those committees. Uh, David uh, Berry Road, FEMA grant update. Yeah, that's complete. You know, I uh, finished up the last piece of the grant uh, with the FEMA rep um, that I was working with <coughs> last week. And he's submitted all that now to the feds, and it will be approved. This is the second phase of it. The first phase was the big part. <coughs> and this uh, was delayed because they couldn't pave or uh, put the guardrail back last fall because winter set in. So they did that uh, in the spring and uh, um, that got approved also in addition to the bigger first part. And uh, FEMA will, um, after it goes through several reviews in different federal agencies under FEMA, <coughs> goes to the state and the state is the party that issues the uh, funds to the town, the reimbursement. Um, we uh, um, only have to put up 10% uh, of the 25% that's left. FEMA pays 75%, and the remaining 25% is split between the town and the uh, state. And because we have those uh, different uh, road standards, bridge standards in place, and other um, uh, studies, uh, <clears throat> our share is, uh, was lowered to 10%. Okay, for that. So we should uh, be getting that in the near future electronically. Right. Uh, 
Lake Street, the Palm Shore Selection Committee update. Yeah, I apologize, I got out of order before. Um, <clears throat> our review committee for that uh, grant met, uh, looked over all the uh, proposals that were submitted, chose two to interview. Uh, one of them will be tomorrow afternoon at 4, the other will be uh, Thursday at 4. And both have confirmed that they'll, they'll be here. So one call today is a little concerned about the hurricane, uh, what that might do tomorrow, but uh, uh, I don't think it'll prevent yeah. that coming up here. Everything on the weather said by 1 in the morning, you yeah. got to be clear here. So I'm sure that some major washout or something should not yeah. be an issue. So once those two are done, then the committee will make a recommendation to the select board to um, uh, hire one of those. Okay. Uh, 4E. Mark, Linda, Daniel. Yeah, I received a call uh, from Linda again. I know we spoke about it. In fact, she had a public uh, conversation with all of us um, maybe a month ago. Uh, she called and asked him where there was closure. <coughs> she hasn't heard back. She felt that he was blowing her off. I don't know uh, what decision, if any, if we made any over there. I know there was a lot of discussion. She lives on the corner James of Wheel Around and uh, Route 7 North. Uh, that the plow to big up her property. And that she had like something done about that. Being in the right of way, uh, we feel really there's not much we could do. I think she just wants closure if we're going to do anything. As far as I knew, uh, that's where we left it. There was no more discussion. But you just correct me if I'm wrong, and I can put it, give her a call and put it to bed. Yeah, there was also the issue with the trimming back of a correct. tree branch, which that went kind of back and forth. I will gladly meet a board member over there. I'll put on my uh, road commissioner hat and meet a board member over there. Um, personally, I don't, as the road commissioner, want to do anything there because it's just going to get torn up if. Uh, if it gets built up again there, um, it's also part of that's in the state right away. Don't really want to uh, work in the state right away, although, anyway, we're glad to go over if someone wants to go over yeah, and see I'll go it. Yeah, if you want, unless Mark wants to. Nope, oh, that's fine. Joel? Yep. Uh, just to go back a bit, I think Kathy has something for the, the board to sign. For no, the that's, the, that's, a, that's all the CDG section. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Heather, we'll set up a time. I'll just okay. call her in the morning later and also make her coming over. Yeah. That way, don't leave her hand. All right, thank you, Mike. Yep. New Town Business, U.S. Census announcement. Uh, I just received an email from the Census that they're going to be closing up shop up here in September. So they're urging everyone who has not yet filled out their census form to, to <coughs> send it in because it, it helps. Uh, uh, towns get grants and other types of benefits. Uh, for Swanton, I believe it's the last I saw was 67 percent here that responded. Uh, the average nationwide is 60 percent. So they're in a uh, kind of a crush right now to get more in at the last minute to get the gap filled. You mentioned the grant, David. How, how, how is that? Do you have to achieve a number to get? Well, no, no, what do you mean? no, they have all kinds of data that they collect when they you fill out that form. Okay. And then uh, for different types of grants, um, you have to show like you're within a certain um, medium income. I see. Uh, and, that, and if you're over it, then you're not qualified for the grant. If you're under it, you are to apply. I thought you were saying percentage answering the census. That's why I asked. Oh, no. Uh, that, I mean, whatever they get, they get. Yep. Yeah, thank you. That's why it's important to try to get 100% because that gives you a more accurate picture of the demographics of that town. Okay, so folks, if you haven't done it, please uh, send in the census data. It doesn't take very long. Do it online. You're done in two, three minutes. Quarterly budget review. That must be you. Okay. So basically, we're at. 58% into our budget. So going down the line items, everything is in line. Um, there's only, pretty much everything is on target. The only thing that we're, uh, the Marble Mill grant expense and the Muse Sidewalk grant expense, they're not 
line items that were expense, but their expenses we incurred, but we're going to have the offsetting for money from the grants when we get them to offset it. So I don't know if you want to go item by item, or do you just want to review it and let me know if you have a question about anything? We're pretty much, right now we should get 50% and we're at a total expenditures at 47%. But we also have some our bigger line items, which is our Like finishing up, like our like the rescue squad, library, recreation, and um, we have still monies left for them for their the way they receive the payment. So the, the biggest items we have, um, as everybody knows, the teen center is now officially closed. We usually do a appropriation to them. They did not use all of their money, so they're earmarking that money to go back to the general fund, which as everybody. May not everyone knows at the end of the year if we have any funds left over to deduct it, you know, be raised by taxes for the next year. So, um, for me, I could just look it over. I have a question. Mm -hmm. yeah, Animal control, we're up 95% of the budget. We're so far over on that. Because we had some legal fees, about $3,500. Okay. At the beginning of the year. Officer, uh, what are some of the things that are paid for that? I see there's a budget line item. That's basically the stipend they receive each Okay, so well, it's, it's the stipend itself, yeah, not the, stipend the itself. other supply. And the animal control, that includes any expenses for the animals. The stipend yeah. to the animal control officer, the tags, um, yeah. any strange expenses you may have legal. Yeah, um, no, that's fine. I wasn't aware of it. Of course, I wasn't aware of it. Of a budget of nine thousand on animal control, how much do we get in license in a year roughly? Probably, depending on the year. This year we're down because of the whole COVID and spending. We usually get off the top of my head about seven eight hundred. Um, we've done a lot better. We used to actually not even get close to that with our collecting of our late fees and the late registration, but the past couple of years actually we've kind of just about broken even with the expense, except for we've had some unexpected expenses. <laughs> so and this year we're going to be down, I think we're, we've gotten so far maybe like $6,700, where we usually go closer to $7,800. So. Okay. So the stipend is $6,000. Six thousand three hundred for the health officer and the animal control. No, the animal control officer is the one that does that. Yeah, I know, but I mean, for the stipend that the animal control officer gets. You want to know how much they get? They get how much do they get? A month. That's are you going to a year? Well, it's six fifty a month, based on that number. Now, what happens if we don't fill that position? I know I'm going off subject, but if we don't fill that position and there's, an, there's something that comes in, who responds? Nobody. Nobody? There's no one? We have nobody. We've like had them. calls, numerous calls, and we have no one who's been in the last four days. We're running off for yeah. Us yeah, well, it's a great question. We're going to talk about it a little bit later when we're in an executive session looking at the list of names because yeah. it's, it's an issue we have. Um, other questions related to uh, the general budget? I right, will just review on the bad and we're not seeing Okay. The study is not really like this. And let's move on to highway and see if we get any. Oh, fireworks. Yeah, we're going to do it. Just I mean, I don't think there's going to be any major event where, uh, you know, we would be doing fireworks, but something we can talk about at some other point if we want, because it's a line item right now with 5000 in it. Is this something that we could put back in general fund? I mean, it would if it doesn't get spent this year, then it just it reduces next year's budget, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Highway, you can carry money. General budget, you can't. Yeah. Sandy? Could I ask a question? You can. Yeah. Okay. You and I have talked about uh, Swanton doing something for the Chippinellis for the 20 some odd years that they ran the team center. Um, is this a good time to bring that up? 
not under budget. Um, well, that's when Kathy mentioned it. But so at some point. Yep. Uh, public comment. Public comment. Um, at the very coming end. up here in a little bit. Okay. Um, move on to the highway budget. Uh, one thing, uh, under the actual highway part, which ends almost at the bottom of the page, it says 50.9%. Uh, the highway budget is, is spent more than that. We have not paid uh, um, a couple of the bills right now. So we, we would show a little higher than the normal 50%, but that's just a large portion we pay whenever the work is done. So it, it would jump us up into the probably 75% or something. But, uh, other than that, there's no other real major issues. Um, we are spending a lot on parts and supplies, fixing up, and I'll talk a little bit under highway updates. Um, South River Street, it shows down there, and that's a part of a grant. So the majority of that hopefully will come back. I don't know if there's any other light items with any questions. Sand's another item. We, we've uh, been hauling a lot of sand lately, but haven't uh, received the bills or paid the bills yet. Anything else on, high, or on highway? I have no questions at this time. Okay, Dane, I'm good. Heather? I'm good. All right. Community and Economic Development. Elizabeth, your nickel. Okay, so um, we're going to spend a few minutes on the leader evaporator, the CDBG Community Development Block Grant. Um, we finally got the award letter, and there are some conditions. And in your packet is a um, essay, Municipal Policies and Codes, MP Form MP1. And talking with Kathy, this is something that is been filled out before. Pretty much when you look at these grants that are part of this form, it basically says that we have a, like a personnel policy and finance, that we do our financing, it kind of covers it from A to Z, what, how we operate and code ethics, ethics, fair housing and drug free workplace. Um, so I don't know if you want to take it and read it or if you're comfortable signing that um, tonight. Where is it? Uh, so I'm trying to find it. In our the only thing in our packet that I see is the oh. MDU sidewalk. Oh, is it separate? Oh, I didn't realize you got an actual packet. It's separate from your packet. I have two trees over here. So. Opportunity. The second is fair housing. Yes. Uh, Have you read this, David? I'm familiar with it from years ago. We had to adopt it. Uh, it has to be readopted every so often to, in order to be uh, eligible for federal grants. So there's um, the old one is in the file. Uh, if you want to adopt this new, that's fine. To keep it. Um, at least updated date lines. Do we know if any changes from the current to the previous? It's pretty much, yeah. It's pretty standard language that um, towns have to comply with uh, to be eligible for federal grants. Whistleblower might be something a little more. Um, Sub-recipient oversight monitoring policy, that might be something to look at, about how the funds are uh, monitored. But it is, it is pretty boilerplate. And we got to sign something similar to it anyway if we're going to get the funds, right, yeah, Elizabeth? Yeah, we'll choice. Yeah. I'm good with it. Yeah, I agree. Heather? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. All right. I'll make so a motion. motion. I'll make a motion to adopt the uh, municipal policy. Is that what I need to do? To adopt the municipal policy? Okay. Municipal policy encodes from form MP1. There is a second. I'll second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. You want me to start this around? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, so there are a number of things that we need to do. Um, I have reached out to the gentleman, the leader of operator, because there are some things that we will need to sign or to um, provide information on. There are performance measures. If you recall, this grant requires that we retain or create 60 jobs, so we're going to retain the 60 jobs. So he needs to verify that and some other things. So um, the other thing that the board will need to discuss is a member of the legislative body, municipal CEO, or another designee will need to go to a fair housing training. So I didn't know if you wanted to select somebody um, to do that, even though we don't, it's not, our grant doesn't involve housing, um, somebody still needs to do a fair housing um, training. David? Fair housing training. Right over that. That's good to me. I'm good with it. Adam? I'm happy with that, yeah. Thank you, David. And then he can train all of us. Right? It'll probably be by the students that we expect. Good point on board. Right. Most likely we'll be. Thank you, David. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so the rest of it I'll keep you updated on as that goes on. The sooner we get this done is the sooner. Um, we can get the grant agreement, so the sooner we can get the funds to leader evaporator. Um, Route 78 update, Joel, do you, since you're the, the engineer, you want to explain? <laughs> I, I left my four pages of notes I took today, I think. Uh, we talked to the project engineer on the uh, Route 78. Between uh, Swanton and Auburn, the update, um, I can keep it very short to say that if you're expecting to see that paving in the next three years, you won't. Um, there are several stages they're going through and they explain the next ones that need to be accomplished prior to uh, being able to actually do any construction out there. And he, he said maybe 2023, but when you, when you hear the list of what they got to do, um, the bureaucracy just can't work that fast. So it more likely it will be 2024, and the duration of the project could be two to three years, the extent of work that they're going to do out there, and that is going to be, for those commuting, it is going to be some serious traffic uh, issues, but it's, it's not happening anytime soon. It is a priority for them. Um, you know, I, I hear a few people <laughs> chuckle. Yeah, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, when you, when, again, there's several pages of notes, and it wouldn't do any good to really regurgitate everything he said. But uh, the next steps involve a lot of legal work related to the right of ways. And if those get challenged and that slows down the whole process, after that's done, it, it'll go to construction documents and then actual construction. But it's, it's a ways away. Explain to him, you know, we had concerns. That is, that is a hazardous road. Is there any conversation to at least try to maintain or repair the road as it is now? I mean, there's some pretty <coughs> cracks and holes. He, he, he's the wrong guy to talk to. If we have concerns with that, we should go to the district. I mean, there's some spots in there that water just... I, I went down the other day with rain, and I got a pickup truck, and it was thrown on me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. You know, I hate to be a, a small car or vehicle going through there, because that's, that's scary. It was scary on my way home to yeah. the today. For the water? Jim Yeah. yeah. Jim yeah. Coda. Is the guy we need to talk to? You mean doing fifty? So that's the Vermont Route seventy eight update. He did say um, that they'll they'll he's been a little remiss in keeping us updated. Um, he's not going to call us every time he does something, but perhaps keeping us a little more updated. So we're hoping sometime next year um, to get an update. And as slow as things are moving, you know, 
doing the right of way work is going to take a while, and that's the next big update. So it, it could be a while. 50 plus, he threw out 56, I think, uh, mm -hmm. properties involved in, in uh, changing the right of way to get the alignment and stuff done. And some of it's with railroads, some of it's with federal agencies, some of it's with private landowners. And anyway, there's a whole process to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Checking my mobile office for the, the rest of it. So the um, part of the CARES Act, there is a um, there is we're looking at ten thousand dollars for regional or local marketing, and there is a regional marketing group um, that is trying to figure out the best way to spend that ten thousand dollars to help small businesses. We think that taking a regional approach will, um, because it will be a competitive grant, taking a regional approach will work better than, than trying to do it locally. Um, I'm kind of pushing for some kind of way for small businesses to get an online presence. Um, they are, there's a, a website called NIFT, N-I-F-T. Um, it's actually the website is GoNIFT, and it's kind of like an online department store. You have, you have Retail, the commercial businesses have like a, a virtual store, so you can go and you can look for a store that has clothing versus um, beauty products, that kind of thing. And, and they're looking at having a, um, a Vermont version of that. Um, I have some issues with that, but that minute will make for a longer discussion. But those are some regional things. Um, working with the chamber on some local buy, um, buy local options. Um, it's just part of a process and um, finding the time. Um, let's see what else. Is that something that you could make a business directory with that kind of time? Uh, not for $10,000. Not over, not regionally. No. Oh. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. The social distancing signs, I'm happy to report, they are all apparently still up. I'm very excited. I know they get taken down every once in a while, so Brian can mow around them. Um, but they are all still up. Um, and we're still looking for places to put some up. I do need to put one on the village green. It's just when the weather's nice, I'm not dressed appropriately, and then it rains when I'm ready to do it. Um, the downtown scoping study, I know this is a village project, but I do work for the town, so I just wanted to let you know that I just want to make sure that you were aware that we're moving forward. We do have a consultant, VHB, um, and we signed a contract with them. We are going, we're looking at having a local concerns meeting, and this is to save the day for September 19th. Um, and again, the downtown scoping study is to look at the area kind of north of the Village Green and the Merchants Row area, and it does include the intersection of First Street and Grand Avenue. Um, so it's kind of that whole kind of S-curve going up toward Merchants Row and over the river. So September 19th, uh, I know that's more than a month away, but is that here? Um, that will probably be here, but time and place to be determined. Um, so we, I just wanted to let you know that that is moving forward. Um, the last update I have is, if you recall, we um, Swanton is part of the Working Communities Challenge, which is under the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. And we are doing a survey, and if you get front porch form, and everybody should have front porch form, the next week you will see some ads to take part in a survey. It is looking for the challenges to finding, getting, and keeping good jobs. And there will be an opportunity to win one of 15 $25 gift certificates or Visa gift cards if you complete the survey. So um, I have more information. If you would like to survey, you can contact me at the town offices, check out Front Porch Forum, and we will have it um, in various other locations. Um, so we're looking for input from the community so we can help figure out, you know, ways to um, develop our workforce. Is that something that's going to go on the website as well? Uh, it will, yes. Okay. Yep. So I think that is it.
Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Regarding the social distancing signs, David, I'll get with you, but I'd like to put something up on our e-sign. Now that the governor's uh, mandate is facial coverings, we'll come up with something we can put out and run for a little while. Okay. <coughs> Elizabeth, you said we want to put one up in the village of Green. Do we know where? I, I was thinking someplace like where that main flower that is. Yeah. No, I'm the, in the park two, three times a day, so if that's yeah. something you want me to oh, okay. get on one of those, I'll give it okay. yeah, okay. 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 Thank you, Mike. I wait on the permit updates. The uh, I told you about the Volvo, the dump body. Uh, that truck has come back. It was hauling sand today. First time it's been hauling since uh, the new dump body was put on it. The uh, piston itself was leaking, so that got replaced as well. That was part of the line item in the uh, contract. They started mowing last week again uh, on the highway um, sides of the roads, but the more gear case, Baron went bad. Got um, $800 worth of parts. Uh, it'll be in next Friday. I'll get that fixed. Sand shed is about, uh, I would say, close to 90% full. Um, getting ready for the winter. We talked about Route 78. Uh, that's all I have. If there's any questions regarding that one. Yeah, I just wonder where or what's happening to the striping on South River because it seemed to be South River is considered a class two yeah. road and the state did notify us they didn't complete um, all their striping up here. They had a truck that had some paint and so they did some of the roads they normally do here and they still have more they're gonna do over the next couple of weeks. Right. Yes, so South River they didn't finish all of uh, BB Road. They only got part of BB Road done but um, should be done in the next couple of weeks. Right, David? That's what John's email said. Right. <clears throat> yep. They ran out of paint on the and they left. And they will be back with more paint for other roads, including the rest of BB and South River. Okay. Any other business? Uh, I've got a small announcement to make. I'm going to step down as chair, effective at the end of this meeting tonight. So we as a board can decide either to elect another chair tonight or we can do it at the beginning of next meeting. And, uh, you know, it hasn't been any secret. I also stated that September was probably going to be my end date. So uh, 30 September, I will, I will step down as a member of the Swanton Select Board. Um, when I originally signed on uh, for the last election, I talked with the other board members, told them I was going to leave early. I was staying for continuity purposes. Uh, it originally should have been done in March of 2020, uh, but September 30th is going to be my last day, so I'm putting that word out there. I know we got another vacancy. I know this isn't a great time, but that's that's what's going to happen with that, and we'll get some qualified people in here and uh, continue on with all the good work that's being done and so on. Okay. Hey. We all really appreciate what you've done with our community. So here. much appreciated, Joel. Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. Well, you're more than welcome. Big okay. hole. Oh, you put your tongue in. Um, any other necessary business? Under correspondence, uh, there are a couple things I had here. Um, the first one I'm not familiar with, but uh, David put it in here. Yeah, Caleb has sent this, and he wants to uh, uh, do some more work on the library, I believe, on the structural elements. And he's asking, and he's applying for a matching grant up to 20000 And then he said, hypothetically, if the town and the library split it, it would be uh, 5000 to go to town. In the library, apparently the twenty thousand uh, requires a fifty percent match. The way this is written, he doesn't say that. So where, where is this correspondence stuff? Right here. Separate. Uh, uh, separate. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm just not in favor of putting out another five thousand. Uh, neither am I. We just did five thousand for the condensers. Uh, we certainly haven't worked out the MOU, and to me, this way, uh, I'm not in favor. There's certainly enough money in their kitty that I think that they can take care of this. But I appreciate them asking. My thought was, 
it's a it's a good opportunity, but who's gonna, she, he says 50-50, but uh, it was my understanding we do the outside, they do the inside. But we haven't agreed on that. But this is all outside. This is, so. this is a separate, this is a separate ask. I, we I, think we table, I think we table this until the right. MOU is done. Yep. Okay. As far as any that. specific amount of money, that the real thing that needs to be done is the MOU be agreed upon. Okay. And, and I know there's some very sticky items for that MOU, but that's how business gets done. Several meetings. We had at least the first one, I think. We got it in the MOU. We talked about it the last meeting. We were supposed to get back together and discuss issues and put some dollar figures to those items we're agreeing upon because there's there's a cost shift that will take place and before the board votes on it um, I think it would be prudent to know what the cost shift's going to be so we know what goes into the general fund if any increase and what decreases in the highway I mean uh, the library yeah for me I just don't think the MOU is something that can work out in a month two months I think it's really going to take some time so then we're going to get together uh, but I think we really need to take the time to go slow in it and make sure that we have some really something we can work with. And we may not, not all agree, the library may agree or disagree with what we come together, but um, I'm certainly not jumping in anything quicker like that on the MOE, that's for sure. Okay. So what you would say, in, and I am suggesting the table, it. anything else, Heather? You're asking me? Yeah. Um, David, do you know? I'm sorry, do you happen to know if there's a timeline on this grant? Did you see anything? No, this, this uh, is very recent, and he didn't really go into detail. Okay. So it's going to right. Page two applications are due Monday, October fifth. Are we going to? We're still in correspondence, right? Yes, we are. We're discussing the library grant application. That's if you have anything further you want to say on it. The library would not be at a very large it's risk if they applied for the grant and had to spend the whole ten thousand. They're making a dollar for every dollar they were to spend. Yeah. We can come to agreement before the grant submitted. So be it. We can come to agreement after, as long as they're willing to cover the cost if they get the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Does it already go? Did somebody already state when the application is due? October 5th. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to sort of respond back when we tell them we're not interested in, in giving them the $5,000 towards the grant if they want to? If they want to fund the 50%, then they're more welcome to apply for it. Well, I will mention that the fireworks cost $5,000 as well. So if we didn't have fireworks, is that allowed? I'm good. We can save that money for something else. I'd rather give it back. I, I think it should be part of the discussion for the ammonium. Yeah. It's all money related. So we're right in with that. It could be zero to the five thousand. Yeah. I yeah, I agree. I mean we just put over five thousand for the pin answer. I think we need to really consider any more at this point. All right. I think we got at least three saved it goes into the MOU discussion. Next piece of correspondence is from Anna Morrison, eight McQuam Shore Road. It's a pretty lengthy um, email, and it basically is the whole discussion of the water quality land values, which we will add it to our list of letters that we have, and part of the discussion uh, at the next meeting. Third item, um, I received this from Chloe Viner, and this is about a race and equity committee that um, some folks are putting together. I'm not quite sure the makeup of it right now. I think it's in its very early stages. And uh, my understanding is the first meeting would be Friday um, afternoon, late afternoon. And they're asking for a town and a village rep, if, if, if interested. I think... Uh, well, I'm going to throw that out here for discussion, and we can decide whether we answer this tonight or not. Uh, before before I open up the discussion, I will say is we have a separate meeting tomorrow with the village and the town to discuss some training for town officials. 
and we'll also probably be discussing something we talked about in a couple different venues and both the village and the town have discussed it in their meetings is a forum to discuss uh, race issues. Um, so some headway is being made. It's going to take a little while to get the training. It'll probably involve a contract. So it's not going to happen in the next two or three days, but it's something we are moving ahead with. Um, and again, the first meeting is tomorrow. This one is separate, a separate committee. Um, it was a very fairly limited um, distribution that this went to. And um, it was sent to me, I guess, as the chair of the SWAT Select Board. And I don't know if we want to send somebody to the first meeting on Friday or let them meet and, and, and start figuring out what it is they want to do. Actually, Sandy, I see your name on this email, and I, you might want to have a few words. Um, I've been speaking with everyone, as you know, uh, hoping that we can get people to come together uh, and to concentrate on, as I have said, you know, on what we have in common, um, and basically that is to heal the rift and to um, educate ourselves about uh, systemic racism. And Elizabeth has made some very good roads. Uh, I had contacted Susanna Davis as well, um, and so have a couple of these people. Um, so I have been supporting them to slow down, to wait until there's some training done, um, and not to rush to any conclusions now. Is tomorrow's meeting a closed meeting? No. No, that's, a, that's Friday night. Uh, I think it's started by, I'm not totally sure. Yeah, I don't think that's a closed meeting. Oh, oh, it's a closed meeting, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, yeah tomorrow's, tomorrow's meeting is the village and town discussing uh, what their steps forward are. It's, it's just trying to come to an agreement just on training. We want to sit down and talk about what is it we want for training. I'll tell you, I grabbed my, one of my 1970 dictionaries to look up one of the terms. Yeah. Yeah, it's not in there. You know, and there's other terms I hear what being terms? used in emails recently that uh, like BIPOC. I only heard of that about a week ago. What? What is that? Black Indigenous people of color. Oh, I never heard that. You know, that's, that's being used in a lot of these emails now. And POC, people of color, is being used. I can't go into a public forum and, and not be a little better educated on what are the right right terms are being used and who's going to be sensitive you know if I say something I don't I don't want to inflame just out of my ignorance because I haven't spent a lot of time uh, with the latest vernacular for this stuff so part of part of what we wanted to do before we had any public forum was to get some training for our folks I agree a hundred percent and that's one of the reasons why I've been trying to keep in touch with everyone some folks um, how do I say this? Some folks don't like to let any grass grow underneath their feet, but I, I we want to do this. We all need education around this. Um, yes, and I appreciate your effort. I've gone to the two vigils the last two Friday nights, so, so people see me there as a, as a swamp sled board. Uh, and had some discussion and said, we just can't do this overnight. We've Has got, it been positive? On the Friday nights? They both they both been positive. First night there was <laughs> first Friday there was maybe eight folks and the next night there was probably sixteen. Good. Except for a few clowns driving by and, and yeah. sharing a few uh, unsolicited comments. Yeah. Um, the it's been very quiet and, and, and <coughs> respectful. A lot of people need the horns and waving and and that sort of thing. And I encourage anybody it, it's good to try to get to know people and what they're thinking and, right. and get some conversation going so yeah. my understanding is that is still happening on Friday night um, anyway so I don't know if we want to send anybody to this or let them meet and then and then decide yeah for me I, I wouldn't be interested in getting in any forum but 
I don't have a better education now because I wouldn't dare say something inappropriate not knowing that I've offended somebody because sometimes I can open my mouth and probably I should. So I don't want no part of it until I have some training for me. I have two questions. That training tomorrow, that's who's attending that? It's not training tomorrow. <laughs> we are meeting to figure out who's attending that. The meeting, who is attending that? I am. I mean, like, who? who Chief Stell is, Reggie from the village, okay. Elizabeth will be there. Good. Okay. Yeah. So just the, some leaders in the community, not employees. Correct. Because it's not training yet. We are meeting to talk about the training because we're going to bring in probably a professional. And so it gets down to it gets down to do we do it for do we make the highway guys some one hour training for them and four hours for us? We don't know yet. We're going to just sit down and start talking about that, and we'll come back to the board. Next meeting, we'll talk about it and see if we are interested in how much we're willing to spend and that sort of thing. I didn't know if it was uh, an email that uh, all the board members get. I didn't see the invitation, so I didn't no, know if it was No, it's been pretty to... small so far. It's not, okay. it's not a select board. If we end up with three, then it's going to be a warm meeting and so on. It's a very preliminary. Okay. Yeah. Um, as far as Friday night, um, I might be able to attend as somebody that's listening, but not speaking as a select board member, but I could listen in on what's going on. Is that, is that what they're looking for? They, 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 it says in here, it is my hope that we can have at least one member from both the village and town boards, chief cell, and interested community members. Who are the interested community members that have been invited? So this email went to Sandy, Judy Paxman, Hillary Santiago, myself, Reggie, Chief Stell, Ellen, H-D-O-G, I, I don't know who is that person. That's the list. Is it by invitation only? No, my understanding is that it's open to the public. Oh, okay. And that it's not about a forum as such, it's about getting a committee together just to figure out what some of the steps are that we can take in Swanton. Yeah, let me read it's, it's an email. It's not very long. Let me read the whole email so we all get on the same page. I think it is time to get our first official race and equity committee meeting on the books. This would be a time to brainstorm a list of goals and ideas for what this committee would entail for Swanton. I will bring with me a list of suggestions Susanna, uh, yeah. Yeah. Susanna yeah. is that Susanna. the right pronunciation, Davis? I also included in this email chain Ellen, who has been very active in managing a similar committee for Milton. It's my hope that we can have at least one member from both the village, town boards, chief staff, and interested community members. I would like the committee to be open to any and all who are interested in being part of the process and so on. We have a lot of work to do and harm to repair before BIPOC and Swan. Feel comfortable attending forums, conservations, and committees, so let's get started. Please respond to this email and let me know if you want to attend this meeting and be part of the committee going forward. Once I have responses, I will send out a doodle pool poll, which they already did. I told that you say Chloe, I thought it was Chloe. Chloe? It is Chloe, right? The pronunciation. I told Chloe Friday night we were going to bring it up at the meeting here because I wanted to see what the board wanted or didn't want. So they already set up the doodle pool and uh, have set the meeting up for Friday. Thank you for your interest in making Swan a place that everyone can feel safe and welcome in. That was the email. Is this Who's available? From Who's Chloe Biner. Thank you. Is it on Zoom as well? Or? Is the, the private, meeting? The private citizen setting it up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's on Zoom. It's, this is not our, this is not our, the only thing we're doing is taking our first preliminary steps to look at training and then we will do a forum later when we get a little smarter on and we'll see the meeting or something like that. Yeah. And then see it. Yeah. So Dude, my my concern if I may, if there's somebody here, because they're asking for somebody from the select board, if somebody from the select board is there, I would be concerned that you're there representing the select board without some kind of training. Yeah. And I think if one of us want to go as an individual, so be it but to represent the board, I don't know if we're ready to do that. That's just my that's just my I agree with you. I think it's 
great to have communications and meetings and forums, but um, for me, without some kind of more formal training, I'd be very wary of representing my town. I'm saying something that I'm going to upset somebody by inadvertently saying something wrong. Misrepresenting everybody. So, do you see this as Chloe and company, whoever that may be, um, making an attempt to uh, hold out an olive branch and so that we can all come together? I'm not totally sure. There was talk the Arts Council started in a race and equity committee and they asked the SEP whether the SEP wanted to get involved with the Swan Enhancement Project and the Swan Enhancement Project pretty much said no, that's not really what we want to get involved in. Um, and then I see this this request come forward, so uh, I don't know if I'd call it an olive branch, but it sounds like someone wanted to get started and help and uh, improve uh, relations and so on, I guess. I think that it's important um, that we slow down and wait for some of the training. That doesn't mean that we can't talk to one another uh, in the intro. Um, so on Friday night, I will go uh, and express my concerns about having the, some of the training happen before we uh, talk about a form and Alyssa, I had a response from uh, Susanna Davis and so did Elizabeth and she suggested a woman that might lead a form and she's the one that suggested that we have some training for the, the town and the village. And it might be the same woman that I talked to for about a half hour last week. Um, which is why we're meeting tomorrow, right? Um, because she said, you know, the training is the first place to start. Um, and they also sent uh, information about Susanna Davis did about other communities in Vermont and what they're doing. Uh, like Putney is working with a select board. Uh, Hartford has implemented a welcome city ordinance. Burlington's created a position, something like Susanna Davis's position. Um, Stafford is currently developing a code of ethics that will include a racial equity component as a way to hold down officials uh, accountability okay. in the way they work. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. I don't think. Some of this work is already happening in Vermont. Um, well, I, I fully agree, Sandy. But again, we agreed to at one of the meetings, I think it was the last meeting, I thought I had head nods of yeah. we were going to do some training. Right. And working with the village, we were looking at sponsoring a forum. Right. So that's two separate things, but that's two things the two municipalities uh, were looking to do. This race and equity committee is a different animal. I don't know exactly what it is yet. I don't either, but I'll find out. Yes. Um, what I'm hearing right now is Mark saying, let's get some training. James is saying, let's get some training. And I think I'm hearing from you, who've spent a lot of time on this, that training is important. Um, Absolutely, for all So I, I think I'll be the third one then to say that we should hold off on sending a rep right now um, until we get some training going. You've heard us in this meeting. Those watching the TV have heard us. Um, that right now, three of us are saying, and I know how to thank you for offering, but that right now, the select board, we're not ready to send someone to this beginning of a race and equity committee of a separate group of folks. Okay. Well, let me ask this. If there is such a committee, wouldn't you want to be part of it? I would want to hear more about the organization of it and what the intent of it is. I don't think there's any harm in somebody sitting at the meeting and listening. If they, if they pinky swear not to talk and represent other people. <laughs> um, I've seen the governor do it at other meetings that I've recorded. 
um, where he just listens to people's stories and their experiences <coughs> with different things, and it's helped him uh, understand what other people are dealing with um, on a daily basis. Um, training, I think, is really important, but uh, I'm sure my family will appreciate it if I don't go to a meeting on a Friday night. Movie night. <laughs> Not a good time. So, um, so I'm fine either way. If I don't go to this meeting, um, I can always go to the second meeting after I maybe have received some training, if that's something that interests the board. Um, I think it's important to say this is valuable to us and that we are interested, uh, regardless of whether someone is able to attend this Friday or not, we are interested in hearing about what they're doing and um, how we can support them. Okay, that's fair enough. And I think Sandy will also probably get back to us. I will. Yes. Um, yeah. And I just, enough for what it's worth, the department. This is not going to be an easy conversation when we do have it. That's why we haven't had this conversation all these years. You know, uh, and I don't know if I said this before, but uh, I have been reading books on race for over 50 years because I grew up feeling guilty for being white. And I've got three bookshelves on books on race, and I'll be happy to loan any of them to any of you folks that want to read one, maybe. But, but this is not easy, and it took, it took a couple of years. It's just in the last few years that people have really identified systemic racism or institutional racism. We all have so much to learn. Uh, none of us need to feel uh, badly about the fact that everybody's not up to date on this, and it's a really big issue. Um, and nationally, we're making progress. Uh, and we can make progress here. I think we're making progress. We are making progress. I think we are. And um, you are correct. It is, it is going to be a little bit painful. It's going to yeah. be a little bit slow. But if we don't do it, we're not going to gain. Um, right. And I will ask to borrow the white fragility book from you. All right. You got it. And then, unless we have anything else right now on this, on the correspondence, I think we're good to go. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Sandy. Let me find my agenda. No, I just want to say, you know, I knew that you were going to be leaving sometime, but I didn't know it was this soon. And I can't begin to express uh, my appreciation for all that you've done for the town of Swat. Well, and there's part of me that says, Say it isn't so, but you're certainly, <laughs> <laughs> I can understand. Uh, your family will be glad to have you free of this burden. And Full thank time. you, Joel. Full time. Well, it's not a burden, but it is it is happening. Um, thank you, Sandy, but you're all good. Um, you're public comments. I guess you started off public comments, Sandy. <laughs> Anybody it. else under public comments? All right, thank you folks. Uh, upcoming events, next select board meeting, Tuesday, August 18th, 7 p.m. in the Village Complex. Next planning commission meeting, 7 p.m. August 19th uh, by Zoom. Next DRB meeting, 6 p.m. on August 26th by Zoom. Executive session. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, just so everybody knows, there will be a public hearing on the 18th to go over some bylaws changes. So if anybody is interested in nothing terribly controversial, I don't think just some cleanup, but there will be bylaw changes at the September 18th select board meeting. All right, thank you, Elizabeth. Item 12, executive session. Uh, I've heard legal personnel, and do we have a contract, David, or just legal personnel? No, you can go to that. Okay. Can I get a motion? I'll make that motion. I move that we find that, that we enter executive session for the select board to receive confidential uh, legal and personnel 
information, which is premature disclosure of it to the general public, would clearly place the select board and others at a substantial disadvantage. So I hear a second. I'll second that. Motion remain in second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Both, so moved. I think it's a second motion. I'll make that motion. I move that based on just uh, made findings that premature disclosure would place the select board and others at a substantial disadvantage. We enter an executive session. Second. I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hearing none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved.